In part two of our lesson on sum and difference identities for cosine, we will derive and use the sum identity. So here, we'd like to derive an identity to use when we have the cosine of the quantity a plus b. Now, what we're going to be able to do is use the difference identity that we just created, and we can rewrite this as cosine of a minus negative b. Now, the reason we want to do that is because we can now use the difference identity because now we have a difference. We know that a minus negative b is just the same thing as a plus b, but having it in this form allows us to use that difference identity. A quick reminder, we know that cosine, I'm going to purposely use different letters here. Think of it as x minus y would be cosine of the first, so x, cosine of the second, y, plus sine of the first, x, sine of the second, y. And now let's apply this. We know we have to take the cosine of the first angle, so we're going to take cosine of a, and we have to multiply it times the cosine of the second angle, so we're going to do cosine of negative b. The second angle is negative b, not b. Then we have to put a plus sign, and we have to take the sine of the first angle, so that will be sine of a, times the sine of the second angle, so that would be sine of negative b. Now let's remember our negative angle identities. We know that the cosine of negative b is equal to the cosine of b, because it's even, and the sine of negative b is equal to negative sine b, because sine is odd. So we're going to substitute those values in. So let's see what happens. We have cosine of a, then for the cosine of negative b, we know that we are substituting cosine b plus sine of a, we leave alone, and for sine of negative b, we know we have to substitute negative sine b. So this will simplify to cosine a, cosine b, minus sine of a, sine of b. Now let's bring down cosine of a plus b. We're just bringing that straight down here. Then this is what's known as the sum identity for cosine. So let's see how this identity will be used. In this example, we have to find the exact value of the cosine of 5 pi over 12. Now you'll spot right away that 5 pi over 12 is not one of the special angles, and what we'll want to do is find a combination of special angles that will give us 5 pi over 12. And just as a quick note here, if the angle is given to you in radian measure, then that means 
when I'm grading your work, I would want to see all of your work in radian measure. Whereas if the angle is given to you in degrees, then you can work in degrees, and I would want to see all of your work in degrees. So since this angle is in radian measure, we're going to stay in radians and figure out the combination of angles that we need. We know that pi over 6 is a special angle. We also know we're going to need a denominator of 12. So underneath it, we can write 2 pi over 12. The next special angle is pi over 4. And we know that pi over 4 is 3 pi over 12. And we can see we're already going to have 5 pi over 12 just by adding these two angles up. So we'll come back over here to the problem and write this as cosine of, we know we're doing 2 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12, but we'll want to write it in the more familiar forms of the angle, pi over 6 plus pi over 4. And of course, these two angles could have been written in either order. We know that we're going to apply the identity that we just learned, which is that cosine of a plus b is going to equal cosine a cosine b minus sine of a sine of b. Now if we apply that, we're going to take the cosine of the first angle, so cosine of pi over 6, times the cosine of the second angle, cosine pi over 4, minus sine of the first angle, sine of pi over 6, times the sine of the second angle, sine of pi over 4. Now at this point in the semester, I'm sure you're getting very good at knowing all of these values, and you want to make sure you keep practicing those. You want to be very fluent in the trig function values of the special angles. Cosine of pi over 6, we know is radical 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Sine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. We can also recognize that this product has a denominator of 4, and so does this one, so we can get our common denominator, it's 4. The numerator of this fraction will be radical 6. The numerator of this fraction will be radical 2, and we have to subtract them. So we put minus radical 2. And this is our answer. A quick reminder that radical 2 and radical 6 are not like terms, so they cannot be combined. This is the simplest form of the answer. In this next example, we have to find the exact value of cosine of 285 degrees. It's CYU time, so pause the video, work the example on your own, then restart the video to check your answer. This problem was given in degrees, so we're going to stay in degrees, and you have many options. Any of the angles that you choose to work with that add up to be 285 degrees are fine for you to use. For example, we could do cosine of, say, 240 degrees plus 45 degrees. Or you may have chosen to do 
135 degrees plus 150 degrees. That adds up to be 285. Or maybe you chose to do 225 degrees plus 60 degrees. That would be fine too. So any option that involves using the special angles that add up to be 285 will give you the same answer as I'm going to get. It might look a little different in your worked out solutions because you picked different angles, but your final answer will be the same. We know that this is an application of the identity for cosine of a plus b, which is cosine a cosine b minus sine of a sine of b. So let's start filling in. Cosine of the first angle means we're going to be taking the cosine of 240 degrees. Cosine of the second angle means cosine 45 degrees. Then we have this minus sign sine of the first angle is sine of 240 degrees and sine of the second angle is sine of 45 degrees. Now our job is to fill in the values. We know that the cosine of 240 degrees is negative one-half cosine of 45 is radical 2 over 2 minus the sine of 240 degrees is negative radical 3 over 2 and the sine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. We're ready to simplify now and this will happen a lot we can see our denominator is 2 times 2 in each case, so our denominator is 4. From the first product, our numerator is negative radical 2, and from the second product, because we have minus a negative, it's going to turn into a plus sign, and we get radical 6. Now remember, if you chose another set of angles, your calculation might have come out in a different order, so it might be that yours came out looking like radical 6 minus radical 2 over 4. Both of these answers are just fine. Now for your convenience, I made a summary box here where you can put both of the identities that we've just learned, the sum and difference identities for cosine, and you probably noticed that they're only different by a plus or minus sign. So the cosine of a minus b worked out to be cosine a cosine b plus sine of a, sine of b, and the identity for cosine of a plus b worked out to be cosine a, cosine b, minus sine of a, sine of b. So you kind of get a two for one special here <laughs> where they're only different by this plus or minus sign and you'll want to practice writing these down every day as I will always suggest with all of your identities that you've learned so far. Remember when we had that one page review sheet I suggested that you write those down two or three times every day so you will want to add these two into that list that you're writing down every day. And listen, I understand that it's a lot of writing it down but it's one of the best ways to memorize these things and make your life ultimately easier throughout the semester.